Welcome to another episode of the Real Game Reviews. I'm Boogie, and this is Je Jedi. 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 Hey, Anfield, do you want some wines? Okay. The last time I did that, Jedi almost killed me. Apparently, he's not here. Okay. Look at the camera. Say, this is real game reviews. This is real game reviews. Okay, I guess welcome to a, a real game reviews. I'm Boogie and this is Anfield. This week we played Rise of Nightmare, Warhammer 40k Space Marine, Driver San Francisco, Dead Island, and Resistance 3. Good job. That sounded better than Jedi. Here's my thoughts on Rise of Nightmare. Hey guys, Boogie here. And this week I played Rise of Nightmare, the story of a man who's having trouble with his wife because of his drinking. So they take a trip to Eastern Europe, and then a classic horror movie thing happens. Something happens scary in the mirror, his wife gets taken, the train crashes, and he sets off to find his wife. It's a basic horror movie theme. The graphics of the game were below average at best. It looks like to me the developers thought, we're making a Kinex game, we don't have to worry about graphics. The sound was alright, it was scary, but only as scary as it can be with all the lights on so the Kinex could see you. The story was the best thing of the game though. It had that classic horror movie feel with a few twists and turns. That's where Rise of Nightmare excels. The gameplay is where Rise of Nightmare fails. It just did not work. It was always asking me to move back or step forward. And the controls were no better. When you wanted to step forward, it wouldn't happen. When you wanted to walk backwards, it was even worse. There is absolutely no replay value in this game. It was hard enough to play through it the first time. I know why the game is called Rise of Nightmare. I had nightmares trying to play it. I wouldn't suggest this game to anyone. It's really hard to be scared with all the lights on. I give Rise of Nightmare a 4 out of 10. It is not a good game. <laughs> so what did you do this weekend, Ninja? Do what? Hey guys, Clam here, and I'm actually going to be stealing lines from Jedi because I'm going to do his review for him. The review's on Dead Island, so here we go. Okay guys, I was looking forward to this game for a while, but this game, unlike other games we all look forward to, stops short in more ways than one. The concept for the gameplay and the story was awesome, and that's where the developers stopped and took a vacation. The characters in the game are very stereotypical and don't offer much to the story, which is generic. What everyone thought was going to be a true game of zombie and mouse turned out to be one of the most buggy games I've played in a while. The gameplay graphics were mediocre at best, but I gotta say the cutscenes look good. They're supposed to create an island where it was hectic with zombies coming and chasing after you, but I found myself wandering around trying to find them. I think I scared the zombies away. I found several glitches roaming the island ranging from little to massive. Little rock glitches in the landscape where you walk through the mountain. And at one scene, I actually got stuck on a ladder. That's right, a damn ladder. And I had to restart my Xbox. I reloaded the last save point and I traded the same ladder again. And guess what happened? That's right, I got stuck again. I really don't have much good to say about Dead Island except that the developers were supposed to release patches for some of the larger glitches. But until then, stay away from the island of Benoit. Playable, yes. Enjoyable, no. I give this glitch a 6.5 out of 10. Clam? Clam! Anyway, that's 
that's really disappointing that Dead Island was so bad. What should have been better? What do you think, Ninja? Ah. Uh. What? Take this. What? Ah. Uh. <laughs> Enough next is a driving game, which is called Driver, which I rather enjoyed. Hey guys, Ninja here. And this week, I played Driver San Francisco. And if you like car games, you'll love this one. It's amazing. You play as John Tanner, who is an undercover cop, and you're trying to take Jericho down, who has escaped from prison. But you end up in a bad car wreck. Now you can shift into different people, which means you can drive any car you want. Spoiler alert, play all the way through the game. The graphics on this game are really good. When you wreck, it looks like you've been in a wreck and when you're in the old Dodge Challenger you can even see the motor torque when you hit the gas the gameplay is phenomenal they even made this game with four wheel drives and you can tell they are the driving in this game feels realistic and if you, if you ever played any of the old driver games remember how the cars names were made up well not in this one all the names match the cars there are many side missions in this one so you have many hours of gameplay. The sounds in the game impressed me. All the way from the spinning out in the dirt to the wrecks that happened. The storyline of the game was great, which is something you don't find that often with car games. You can really tell they put some time into this game. I have to say, job well done. I would give this game a 9.5 out of 10. Man, Driver San Francisco... Did you bite my arm? I wouldn't do something like that. Ninja? No. Ninja? Okay, yes, I bit your arm. So you're sorry for turning me into a zombie. Sorry for turning me into a zombie. Here's Anfield's thoughts on 40k Space Marine. Really? Yes, I was hungry. Hi guys, Anfield here. For having never played any game in the Warhammer series, I was not disappointed. With some cool long range weapons and some awesome hand to hand combat weapons, the gameplay is actually quite enjoyable. You play as Captain Titus, the leader of the Ultramarines. You are sent to the Forge World Graia to help hold key positions from the invading Orc Horde. Just when the Orcs seem defeated, a new enemy arises. Warhammer 40k Space Marine has a rather basic storyline that is stretched by betrayal. The main drawback that I incurred was that you were not able to walk over any obstacles in your way. If there was a pebble in your way, Titus would come to a stop. Other than this, the game was pretty well designed. With an online multiplayer option, you were able to enjoy slaughtering the Orcish Horde with your friends. And with an ample amount of Orcs to slaughter, the bloodshed will be gratifying. The audio and cutscenes were also entertaining, and I rate this game a 7 out of 10. Yeah, dude, that Space Marine game looks like a lot of fun. Dude, how'd you fix your arm? The boogeyman, you can't zombify me. Come on, dude. <laughs> Up next is a new little segment we're going to have. We have the news with Tank Girl. Mmm. Boobs. Welcome to Real Game Reviews. It's Tank Girl, and I got the new headlines for you. Max Payne 3, to be released in 2012 by Rockstar Games. It is set eight years after the events of all the last installment of the game. Xbox is still best-selling console in the U.S. Last six months, straight out selling PS3 and Wii combined, pushing over 300,000 units. Deus Ex sells two million copies worldwide, and there is DLC on the way to keep sales strong for the holidays. Nintendo might be in trouble with Wii U development. The console's wireless connectivity and game development are hitting snags and are on the fourth prototype. Dude, the news girl looks hot. Mm. Uh. Hey, that's my line. Dude, shut up, you ain't Jedi. I can steal all your lines that I want. Well, if you want to talk so much, tell us about Resistance 3.
Hey guys, Clam here with Resistance 3. This is an awesome game. You play as Joseph Capelli who is trying to save the world from a Camaran invasion that's been going on for two games already. The graphics on this game could have been better. It's PS3. Come on, where are the 1080p graphics? That's really the only gripe I have about this part of the game is that it should have been in 1080p. Other than that, the graphics were great. No glitches really to speak of. The sound in the game is great. Each person's voice acting is believable and all the weapon sounds were unique to each weapon. The music score is what really set the mood in this game. The orchestra in the background really sets the tone for each level. The story's a little run of the mill. I wasn't engrossed in what was presented to me, but it was enough to keep the interest there. It's all about killing aliens with badass guns. When the writers added in Joseph's sick son and his wife hiding from the Camara, it made the story a little sappy. The game is a blast to play. It has great aiming and awesome weapons, which is imperative to first-person shooters. If you use a weapon enough during the game, it upgrades to a more powerful version. My favorite was the 44 Magnum with exploding bullets. Try it. This game is hard enough to where you will die three or four times a level, but never to the point you can't pass a level. I enjoyed this game a lot. A whole lot. The replayability of this game is very good. The developers threw in some co-op and online multiplayer. Death matches, capture the flag, and other game modes are fun, but don't expect this game to steal you away from Call of Duty for very long. I really enjoyed this game, and I think it's one reason you should dust off the old PS3. It's killer graphics and sound, decent story, average multiplayer, and kick-ass guns are enough for me to tell you to buy Resistance 3. It's a blast. I give Resistance 3 a 9.5 out of 10. Thanks for joining us this week, guys. We had fun. We hope you did, too. And join us next week. We're going to be playing Radiant Silver Gun, The Gun Stringer, White Knight Chronicles 2, and NHL 12. Dude, where's Boogie? Man, he's still pissed off at you for biting him. I couldn't help it. I got hungry. Well, you know the only cure for this is a gunshot and a bite from Boogie? Oh, hell no. Oh, ninja! Oh, hell no!